tune in for Patrick Ching's Painting in Paradise. Aloha, I'm Patrick Ching, and thank you for joining me on Painting in Paradise. In this episode, we enter Hawaii's streams and meet the animals that dwell in them. We'll get to know some of our native stream animals, including the shrimp called opai, mollusks called hihivai, and the gobi fish called oopu. Aquatic biologist Skippy Hao of Maui will discuss the life cycle of our native species and what's happening in Hawaii streams. We'll see how some species of native stream animals climb up huge waterfalls to get to the upper mountain streams that are safer from predators. Then I'll show you how to draw and paint the Oopu Nakea, the largest species of Hawaii's native gobies. Enjoy all this and more on a live streaming episode of Painting in Paradise! <laughs> Hawaii's streams have always been a big source of wonder and learning for me. Whenever I'd discover a new stream animal, I'd run to the encyclopedia and try to read about them. As I grew up, my interest in biology flourished. Soon I was creating wildlife art, including coloring books, and this painting of Hawaii's native stream animals that was made into a poster for the Hawaii State Division of Aquatic Resources. On the island of Maui, I met up with Skippy Howe, a man who's been studying Hawaii streams for many years. Hi, I am Skippy Hao. Uh, I work for the State Division of Aquatic Resources. I've been actually an aquatic biologist here on Maui for 36 years now. What I've been fortunate is I've been able to study the streams. Uh, but Wailuku River Mount has changed a lot. Well, we've had several big storms, uh, but each time I've been able to help document that the hihivai will come back and then also the recruitment. So the hinana, uh, the opai, and the hihivai have come back uh, and migrate into the stream. Uh, so they come in from the mouth and then they migrate upstream. Uh, it appears that they will follow the fresh water. Not necessarily have to come back to the same stream, but they will follow where the fresh water is coming from. And then when they come back to the stream now, then they come back and then they live the rest of their lives inside the stream and stay in fresh water. Uh, what's been fascinating is also being able to watch the hihivai because they'll farm lines. And so the hihivai now farm lines inside the concrete channel uh, where the flood stream project is. So there's all this concrete, which I never used to pay attention because uh, if you're in a regular stream, then what the hihivai will do is they'll actually migrate, but they're under the rocks. And so uh, you really don't get to see them. And because we have the concrete channel, so what they've uh, sort of done is they sort of stay along the wall, uh, will migrate, follow the leader, and then they'll head upstream. It's nice to see healthy populations of oopu, opai, and hihivai. Hawaii's native stream animals include mollusks. Of these, the largest is the hihivai. It can grow to be two inches in diameter and inhabit the higher mountain streams. The hapavai is browner in color and smoother in texture than the hihivai. It has more wing-like tips of its shell and it inhabits the lower areas of Hawaii's streams. Hawaii has two types of native freshwater crustaceans. The first is the freshwater shrimp called opai kalaole. There's also a native prawn called the Opai Oe Ha'a. Hawaii streams also have introduced crayfish and Tahitian prawns that grow much larger than the native prawn and opai. The male Tahitian prawns have very large claws and they prey on native opai and fish. Other introduced stream animals also eat natives. 
minnows, tilapia, and catfish all prey on Hawaii's native gobies, which are known as o'opu. There are four kinds of o'opu that are endemic to Hawaii and are found nowhere else in the world. The o'opu alamo'o, whose males have a distinct orange tail area. The o'opu naniha, with its vertical stripes and dark band beneath its eye. The o'opu no pili, whose males have a distinct black and white horizontal striping. And the o'opu nakea, which is the largest of the native gobies. One interesting thing about the nakea is that the males have a much larger mouth than the females. See if you can tell the sexes of these fish just by looking at their mouth. All of the native o'opu have pelvic fins that are fused together to form a suction cup. The suction cups help them to climb wet rocks and tall waterfalls to get to the higher mountain streams. These streams are much safer from predators because most of the predator stream animals can't climb waterfalls. The indigenous O'opu Akupa is a carnivorous fish that does not have a suction cup and therefore stays in the lower stream areas. All of Hawaii's stream animals lay eggs in the streams and their eggs and larvae are washed into the sea where they spend part of their young lives as zooplankton in the ocean. When big rains send fresh water into the sea, the tiny larvae start making their way back to the streams. The young o'opu are called hinana and are transparent at first, until they start to eat and gain some pigment. The tiny o'opu use their mouths as well as their suction cup fins to help them climb up some of Hawaii's tallest waterfalls. Attention teachers and students, if you'd like to learn about and help Hawaii's native stream life, visit navaiekolu.org. You can even take a virtual stream tour. Now get your paper, pencils, pens, and whatever you want to draw with ready, because when we return, I'll show you how to draw the o'opu nakea. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how I go about drawing the O'opu nakea. Now you know this is the biggest of the O'opu species, so I'm going to make it fit on this paper by kind of making the body here and the head here. And I'm going to make the tail like turn back like that, you know. Now you know when I start any drawing, I like to start by pressing softly. How are we going to press? Softly. softly. That's right. I press softly so we don't dig into the paper and that way we can erase or ignore lines if we need to, okay? So the opu, like many animals, can be formed up using ovals. Uh, ovals are great for forming up people, animals. So I'm going to start by putting an oval right about the center of the page, maybe a little below the center of the page, okay? Just like that, I'm going to put an oval right there. And that's going to be for the opu's body. Now right there, I'm going to put the head of the opu, and that's another egg shape, just about that big right there, okay? Now for the tail, I'm going to put a shape, and the shape is kind of like this. I don't even know the name of this shape, but it goes... Okay? Just like that. Can you see the opu taking shape now? we got the body, we got the head, we got the tail. And we can put another oval way back here for the tail fin. Just like that, okay? And we'll just kind of connect it there. Now the next thing I'm going to do is the pectoral fins, okay? And I'm going to make a circle right around here, right where the head meets the body. And on the other side, I'll make a little thinner oval like that, okay? That's the other side one. Now next, I'm going to draw a line from the top of the tail here. And look, I'm going to determine the center top of this opus body coming down here, kind of staying on the top, because that's where I want the fins to go around. So make this line, but keep it up top, uh, not right in the middle, a little higher than the middle. The next thing I can do are the maka, the eyes. And I can have one big bulging eye right around here. And the far eye, I can put them right around there, okay? You see them coming to life? <laughs> and next, I'm going to put in the fins. Now, there's a couple of dorsal fins here. Okay, one there. And one a little longer, like that. 
And the next thing I can do is put this uh, bottom fin over there. And that one comes right around there, okay? And I think that's all the fins we got going. Now one thing you can do with the fins is start to give them direction of lines, yeah? So the lines of the dorsal fins can just go kind of in the direction that the dorsal fin grows like that. All right, and the second dorsal fin will have lines going in that direction too. As will this bottom fin over here. Okay, now the pectoral fins, they might have a little section right here that's a little thicker. And then have some lines radiating out. This one here, we just get to see a little bit of it. Okay, and finally, the tail fin. Now looking at that maka, it seems like something's missing and that is the, the eyeball itself, yeah? So you can put a couple more circles there. All right, we can see one of those. Now if you know O'opu, like I know O'opu, <laughs> you know there's something very distinctive missing on this fish. The Oopunakea is famous for its huge lip. And I tell you what, I didn't know this until recently, but the males have a much bigger mouth than the females. So just put a line right around here. If you want a male, you're gonna make a big lip like that. If you want a female, you're gonna make a smaller lip, okay? So there, I made a male. Um, next, we can put some of the stripes and the lines and I just kind of put bands going around this direction here, around the belly. I don't know how many there are, five, seven. And I put a little bit of markings in there, jaga jagas, you know, jaga jagas, jaga jagas. All the way up here within those bands. As I recall, the Oopunake have a dot right around their dorsal fin there and another one right there on the tail fin area. I think it's called the caudal fin or the caudal something. Now that I've got the Oopunake formed up and drawn out and put some detail on it, I'm going to go over with a bigger pen so you can see it even better. And this time I'm going to just keep the lines that I want and disregard the ones that I don't want to emphasize, okay? So I will start right here at the bottom of the fin, the tail fin. Then I will continue to the head. Now every time you got a little bit of a line that goes in front of another line, that tells the viewer what's in front of what. So I want you to be very um, alert about those, pay attention to them, notice them in nature. Notice them in other people's artwork. Notice them in comic books. Yeah. I'm going to form the maka up and... All right. And then I'm going to make this body come here. And right behind the fins, I'll just kind of leave it. Continue it. I'll just leave it there. And right where we started, I'm going to finish. Next, I'm going to draw the pectoral fins. Now that I have my opunakea, I think I'll put him on a rock and maybe uh, another background rock and build this picture up with a little more than we have already, okay? And now that I've got my opunakea there, I think I'll put one swimming in the distance. And now I've got a opunakea on a rock with some limu and another one swimming in the background there. I'll put his gill right around there. And now I'm just going to give it a little bit of shadowing. Maybe just a little bit of color or shading right under the fish. And you know, the little dimples in the rocks. And there you have it, the Oopu Nakea. When we return, I'll talk about encouraging fellow artists, and then I'll show you how you can paint an Oopu.
So on this episode of Art Talk, I'm going to talk about encouragement. Now, you know that uh, being an artist, claiming you're an artist, saying you're an artist takes guts already, yeah? You got to be brave to say that, uh, to go through the world and let the world know that you are taking on this life with the mindset of an artist, a person that learns artistically, that absorbs things, that analyzes things, that is sensitive and aware of their surroundings. Now, I want to encourage you to recognize the people that are out there that profess to be artists and want the world to recognize them as artists. Give them a boost, okay? When you see their art that they've shown you on uh, social media, at a show, or just talking to them, give them encouragement. Promote your friends, promote your artist family. Tell your kids how much you love their paintings. Um, do art with them. Do art as a family activity. You know, if Tutu is painting with the grandkids and the cake and the mommy and the daddy or the cousins, uncle, daughter, sister, brother, and son, whoever, I hope you guys take my advice. Get your friends and family together, do art together, and learn about the world through the eyes of an artist. And now I'll show you how you can paint your Oobu drawing. This drawing was done on watercolor paper because I'll be using some watercolor painting techniques on it. Watercolor paper absorbs and holds the water so that the artist can guide the paint to where it's wanted. You can use cheap or expensive watercolor paints, or you can thin acrylic paints with water and use them in a watercolor style. That's what I'm doing on this painting. When you use acrylic paints as watercolors, your layers will stay put once they're dry. So when you put additional layers on, those layers will not lift off the first layers you put down. In traditional watercolors, the artist leaves the white or light areas unpainted so that the color of the paper becomes the lightest color of the painting. I'll start painting the water that is behind the oopu and the rock that it's grazing on. First, I'll paint with clean water around the oopu and rock. That way my paint will stay within the area I painted with water. I'm using an aqua color that I made with phthalo green and white for the water above and a bluish purplish color for the water below. The water I put on the paper helps the two colors blend together. Sometimes you can use gravity to help one color flow into the other. For the rock, I'll make a tan color. And for the shadow under the opal, I'll use a touch of gray and purple. Sometimes I use a combination of blue and brown to make a dark gray. I'll use some yellow and green for the limu or algae that is on the rock. For the opu itself, I'm using a yellowish tan color first. The males are the ones with really big lips. Then I add some medium and darker browns. He's got some brownish stripes too, and he's got some black marks on those brown stripes. I painted over the opu in the distance with the color of the water, and then added some brown colors to it as well. Finally, I'll reinforce some lines with this pen. And 
then, don't forget your signature. Thank you for joining me on Painting in Paradise. I hope you enjoyed learning about Hawaii's streams and the animals that live in them. I'd love to see what you did, so why don't you send pictures of you and your art to patrickching.com. <laughs> Aloha. I remember days when we were younger. We used to catch opu in the mountain stream. Round the Kualao hills we'd ride on horseback. Hey friends, it's me, Patrick Ching, and I'm here to introduce you to the Papa Hanau Mokuakea Song and Color Book Project. All you gotta do is just go to uh, www.papahanaumokuakeasong.com and here, I'm gonna do it right here. Bing! Boing! Magic! That's Kavika Kahiapo. And he's telling us about this song. You can even download the coloring book pages and the ukulele chords. Hmm. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. Scroll down and get the free coloring book pages. Right there, you can download the coloring book pages, print them out, and color them. See? Look. Now this downloads better with a laptop computer rather than a um, handheld device. Kavika Kahiapo. So if you want to learn a lot and have fun doing it, download, print, and color the pages at papahanaomokuakeasong.com. Papahanao Mokuakea Song.com Sacred places need a kea Papahanao Mokuakea Alright The Papahanao Mokuakea Song coloring books are finally here complete with lyrics and ukulele chords too Get your copies at papahanaomokuakeasong.com